Hello, today we're going to talk about static equilibrium. We have two goals today, so we'll introduce the concept of static equilibrium, and we'll talk about the general conditions that the forces and torques have to satisfy, so that something that is, rest re that is at rest remains at rest, and that's what static equilibrium is all about. Something's at rest and remains at rest. And secondly, we'll go through a particular example of static equilibrium. Look at the forces and the torques. Okay, so for an object to be in static equilibrium, in other words, to remain at rest, two conditions must be satisfied. First, the first one is the object must have no net force. The sum of all the forces equals zero. The second uh, condition that has to be satisfied is the object must also experience no net torque. The sum of all the torques equals zero. And don't forget that an individual torque, we can find the magnitude of it using the equation torque is RF sine theta. Okay, so two very basic conditions. Sum of all the forces is zero and the sum of all the torques is zero. Okay, so we'll look at this particular example for the rest of the, uh, the movie. So we have a uniform beam. It's sitting on identical scales. Scale A is close to the left end of the board, and scale B is uh, kind of halfway out from the center to the right end, approximately there. So scale A is farther from the center of the board, the beam, than uh, scale B is. But the beam is in equilibrium. It is at rest, and it stays at rest. Which scale shows a higher reading, A or B? Okay, so you could probably, you might even know the answer intuitively, but we'll go through and exhaustively figure out what these scale readings are. So we're going to start by sketching a free body diagram of the beam. So we'll draw a little copy of the beam in the top right, and we'll draw some forces on it. And so think about what the free body diagram looks like, what the forces are that are being exerted on this beam by things external to the beam. And before, when all we needed to worry about was forces, we just said, okay, well, as long as we get the force in the right direction, we won't care exactly where it goes. But now, when we're worried about torques, we have to be absolutely precise about where the force goes, because a torque involves the force and the distance from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. So we've got to draw the force on here in exactly the right place. Okay, so when we draw on the force of gravity, we're going to put it at the exact center of the beam, which is the beam's center of gravity. Okay, so it's not enough just to throw an old MG downward force on here. We've got to put it on, draw it on, the free body diagram in the exact right place, which is in the center of the beam. And then, of course, we have a couple of uh, upward normal forces, one from each scale. Okay, so this will turn out not to be true, but we will start by drawing them the same size as one another. Okay, and we'll talk about why this can't be true a little bit later. Okay, so there's our free body diagram. Mg down, and Mg is applied in the center of the beam, at the center of gravity of the beam. And the normal force applied by scale A is at the location of scale A. The normal force applied by scale B is at the location of scale B. Okay, so let's try and answer the question, is each normal force half the weight of the beam? So I already kind of gave the answer to that away, but we'll try and attack this first using forces. Okay, so let's see what we get from just balancing forces. Sum of all the forces equals ma. Okay, sum of all the forces does equal ma, but of course in this case, a is equal to zero, so the sum of all the forces has to be zero. So we have our two upward forces. We've chosen up to be positive here. So those upward forces go in with a plus sign. And then the mg force shows up with a minus sign because it's down and we chose up to be positive. OK, so we rearrange that and we get the sum of the two normal forces has to add up to mg. Now let's say we have mg equals 12 newtons. Okay. 
So what our equation tells us is that the two normal forces add up to 12 newtons. However, based on only forces, only the information we get from forces, we can't say what the values of the individual forces are. Okay, we don't know if they're both 6 newtons, we don't know if one's 3 and the other's 9, if one's 10 and the other's 2, if one's 11.5 and the other's 0.5. All we know is that they add up to be 12. Okay, so it's a very simple scenario. If all we know about our forces, we actually get stuck in this very simple scenario as far as trying to predict what the scale readings are, what the normal forces are applied by the scales on this beam. Okay, so we're going to move on, and now we're going to talk about torques. And when we talk about torques, we need to know distances, and we also need an axis to take torques around. And so we're going to start by taking torques around the exact center of the beam, the center of gravity. Okay, so let me draw on some distances. We'll say that between the center of the beam and scale B is some distance D. We'll say the other scale from the center of the beam out to the scale A is 2D. And then we've got an axis, and the axis goes right through the center of the beam. And that axis is shown as a black dot with, dot with a red center on it. Okay, so when we take torques, so here's our equilibrium condition, sum of all the torques equals zero. So when we take torques, we have to pick positive direction. And we picked an axis to take torques about, so that's fine. So let's say here that clockwise is positive. And whether a force exerts a clockwise or counterclockwise torque depends on A, the direction of the force, but B, where it's applied relative to the axis of rotation. Okay, so in this case, we'll do some of all the torques about the axis through the center. And we're applying our torque equation, RF sine theta, to each one of the three forces in here. Okay, so I'm going to get for the upward normal force about the center, if you put your pen on the screen, hold it at the axis, push up in the direction of that upward normal FNA, you will see that your pen goes clockwise. That's our positive direction. So that torque, R is 2D, force is FNA, uh, sine of the angle between the line we measure distance along, that's a horizontal line, and the vertical force is 90 degrees, sine 90 is 1. So you have plus 2D FNA for that torque from that normal. The other one, even though it's also an upward force, is on the opposite side of the uh, axis from the first one, and that gives us a counterclockwise torque. If you hold your pen again over the screen, hold it where the axis is, push on it upward in the direction at the point where FNB is applied, you'll see your pen goes counterclockwise. That's a counterclockwise torque. That's where the minus sign comes from. When we do RF sine theta to calculate that torque, D is R, F and B is F, and again we have sine of 90 degrees because we're measuring D horizontally and the force is, is uh, vertical. Okay, so you'll note that I then finish off the equation with an equal zero. Well, what about MG? Okay, so there's a third force on our diagram, but it doesn't show up in our torque equation, and this is because it passes through the axis, so R equals zero. So any force going through the axis gives you no torque. Okay, fine. So then we don't know what D is, but the D cancels out of the equation, so that's good. And so what we can say here is that FNB is 2 times FNA. Okay, so FNB is twice as large as the normal force from A. Okay? And if this was, say, a couch you were trying to carry out of your apartment, would you want to be in position A or in position B? Well, you want to be actually as far out from the center as you can. The closer you get to the center, the larger the fraction of the couch's weight you personally have to support. Okay, so put your really big and hefty friends in the middle and you go out on the outside and you'll be all right. Okay, so this by itself again doesn't allow us to calculate what either one of these forces are, but if we combine this with what we learned from forces 
then you can solve to find the two normal forces. So it's two numbers, one of which is twice as big as the other one, and collectively they add up to 12 newtons. That's the information we get from the forces, so you can figure out what those torques are. Or you could take torques around some completely different point. Okay, so let's try that, just to go through the process. Okay, so we're going to take torques now around a different axis just to see what happens. And one good rule of thumb is that you really want to take a, an axis, pick an axis where one or more of your unknown forces go through. Okay, so in this case we can't pick an axis where more than one force goes through, but we certainly can pick an axis where one of the unknown forces, the normal forces, goes through. So we'll take torques around the point where a force from scale B is applied. So there's our axis there going right through the point on the beam where the force from scale B is applied. Okay, once again, sum of all the torques equals zero. So when an object is in equilibrium, you can take any axis you want. It doesn't even need to be on the beam. And you can apply this equation, and it will work. Okay, so once again, let's say clockwise is positive. So now we have, once again, three forces on the free body diagram, but only two of them are going to show up in our equation, the two that don't go through the axis. Okay, so now when we apply RF sine theta to calculate the torque due to the normal force from scale A, the distance from our axis to that force is 3D, so R is 3D, the force is FNA. Uh, this is positive because that's a clockwise torque relative to that axis. Uh, sine theta is again sine of 90 degrees, which is 1, so that torque is plus 3D FNA. Then we get, oh, that's a mistake. There's a typo on the screen. It should be minus dmg, not just mg, but dmg. Okay, so because a torque isn't just a force, it's a distance times a force. And it's minus because that mg force is trying to make the beam go counterclockwise relative to our, um, relative to our axis. Okay, so with the dmg in there, then the D's will cancel out. Of course, FNB gives no torque, pass it through the axis. So you get rid of the D's when you have plus 3D FNA minus DMG. Apologies for that typo, equals zero. So you rearrange, solve for FNA. FNA is one third of MG. MG we said was 12. One third of 12 is four, so the normal force from A is four. And if we combine that with our force equation, FNA plus FNB equals 12 newtons, we can find FNB is 8 newtons. Or we could once again try doing torques around a completely different axis. So once again we've solved the problem, but let's just really be exhaustive about this and try it one more time through a different axis, see what the result is. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to try summing torques around an axis passing through the point where um, the force from scale A is applied. Okay, so close to the left end of the beam. Again, sum of all the torques is zero. Zero about any axis, certainly true for this axis. Again, we're gonna say clockwise is positive. Okay, so now we've got, hey, there's no typos in this equation, that's nice. So now we have, remember the mg torque was negative in our last equation, but now it's positive, okay? So in this case, again, take your pen, hold it over the screen, pin the pen, hold it at the place where the axis is, and push on it in the direction of mg at the location of the mg force. You will see your pen goes clockwise. If you do that for FNB, your pen will go counterclockwise. Okay, so the distance to the mg force from the axis 2D, the distance to the normal force from scale B, from the axis is 3D, so that's where the distances are coming from, 2D and 3D. So again, we're doing torque from any individual force is RF sine theta. And once again, the FNA force gives no torque because it passes through the, through the axis. So once again, we've selected an axis where one of the unknowns goes through, and we can eliminate that unknown from our equation by selecting that axis. Okay, so the D's again cancel out. FNB, the normal force from scale B, is two-thirds of mg. 
mg was 12, so you get 24 newtons over 3, or 2 thirds of 12, that's 8 newtons. And once again, we can combine that with another equation, our previous torque equation, or our previous force equation, and get that FNA is 4 newtons. Okay, so we've got at the answer several different ways. But one of the key things to note about this is if all we know about is force, we actually can't solve for the values of the normal forces applied by the scales. Okay, even though this is an incredibly simple scenario with just three vertical forces, uh, mg force and then two normals, and you can't do it with force alone. Okay, so you have to bring in torque to get to the answer. So this is why torque is so important. And equilibrium is also very important. In fact, it's got a lot of applications in the human body. Okay, with your arms and legs and feet and things like that. Okay, when you hold things or you walk or run or move, lots of equilibrium ideas. Just holding yourself in one place. If you balance on one leg, for instance, with a lot of equilibrium uh, ideas, concepts uh, brought to bear on, on analyzing that scenario. Okay, so that's all for today.